Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting locus problem. Well, we're kind of going to solve it. I'll show you uh, what it means. This is going to be a pretty interesting graph. So we're basically looking for the set of numbers that satisfy this equation, r equals theta. But where is z? There's no z in the equation, right? So let's see how this goes. I'm going to show you first uh, to how we can convert it to Cartesian. And then with the Cartesian equation, we're also going to be looking at a couple different things. And I'll show you a bunch of graphs. All right, let's get started. So first of all, we got to remember some of the rules for the uh, conversion to uh, co polar coordinates from Cartesian to polar, right? So let's go ahead and consider the argon plane. We have a point, and if we connect that point to the origin, basically we can talk about the distance, which is the r, and then there's an angle, right, that this uh, vector thing makes with the positive real axis or the x-axis, which is theta. So uh, as you change the theta and the r, obviously you're going to be getting a bunch of different graphs. And this is just one of them, r equals theta. But that's significant because it's going to give us a really nice picture. Now, the question is, if you write a complex number as, you know, r times e to the i theta, how do you connect this theta to R. You know, what is the relationship? Or with the Cartesian system, right? So if you think about this, in the first quadrant, things are a little easier to visualize. Suppose this is X and this is Y. We can basically write down the sine and cosine from here, or we can just write this as R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. If you go ahead and distribute this and set it equal to X plus Y I, you're going to realize that, okay, X is equal to R cosine theta and Y is equal to R sine theta. Also, we get an interesting relationship from the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? And of course, uh, tangent theta in this case is going to be y over x, which we can then use the arctangent, the inverse tangent function to isolate theta, right? For example, if x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and since r is equal to theta in our case, r squared will, will be the same as theta squared. But what is theta, right? That's a good question. Well, if tangent theta is equal to y over x, then uh, naturally theta, we should be able to write as arc tangent y over x, right? Obviously, this is not the actual way to write it because this only works in certain quadrants. I believe the first and the third where the uh, y and the x have the same sign because y over x is always going to be positive. But if one of them is negative, then y over x is going to be negative, and that's a different story because you then have to consider adding pi or something else, right? Great. So this is actually the actual formula. Theta equals arctangent y over x plus pi over 2 multiplied by 1 minus sine of x. And sine of x is basically 1 if x is positive, and if x is negative, sine of x is just going to be negative 1. What happens if x is 0? That should be 0, right? Great, so it's a really nice, interesting function, and I believe a long time ago uh, I made a video on the sine function, which is the S-I-G-N, but I believe I spelled it as S-G-N. Anyways, you get the idea, hopefully, but to keep things simple, I'm going to use the arctangent y over x version here. So, if you go ahead and plug this in here, then you're going to get something like this, right? x squared plus y squared equals arctangent y over x squared. And guess what? At the end, we're going to look at the graph of this to see what that looks like. Of course, we're going to compare our Cartesian version to the polar version because that's going to be important. But before we get to that, remember this is the formula, which is nice because then it pretty much gives you all the possibilities. But let's go ahead and try to visualize this. First of all, what does r equals theta mean? What kind of numbers are we talking about, right? Or points. So here's how... Uh, a way to maybe at least look at the one of the points, right, obviously, and we're going to look at more points, but let's start with this. Now, notice that this is a diagonal y equals x in the Cartesian form, and this basically represents pi over 4 in the radian world, right? Pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees. So, the distance from 0 to this point is also pi over 4. Notice that pi over 4 is about 0 0.75 something, who knows, it's 
close to a, a quarter, right? Because it's half of uh, half of pi, right? And pi is 3.14. Think about it. It's about 0 0.75. So the distance is that. So in other words, the theta is pi over 4 and r is pi over 4 because r equals theta. That's the requirement. Where does this graph start? It starts at 0 because when theta is 0, r is 0. It's not away from the origin. It's at the origin. And then as you increase the angle like theta, and you can definitely do this on Desmos or other graphing calculators, you're basically going to be getting a longer and longer r, right? What happens if you put it all together? Let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, you're going to get a shape like this, which is pretty interesting, right? Don't you think? If you haven't seen this before, this probably looks very interesting to you, but this is called a spiral. And yes, the equation for the spiral is so simple, r equals theta. But don't worry, I'm going to show you a more general version. We're also going to look at the Cartesian graph, and we'll discuss quickly, okay? But that's one way to look at the graph of r equals theta, which is a spiral. Obviously, if you do all those points, you're going to get this shape. And notice that we're getting away from the origin as theta increases because r increases as theta increases. Make sense? Cool, cool. Now, here's a close-up. As you can see here, this point here is the pi over 2 because you should realize that, and I think we're going to have a closer look at this. Yeah, that's going to be the next one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Now, this point is 0, pi over 2. Now, what does that mean? It means that when r is pi over 2, like maybe 1.5-ish, right? Then your angle is also going to be pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, because r equals theta. Remember, r should always equal theta for our graph. Hence, we get the following picture. Make sense? Awesome. Here's another graph. The same thing from Wolfram Alpha. Again, it's kind of like a nice way to graph it. But notice that it's only being graphed from theta from 0 to 3 pi. If you continue, that's just going to wrap around because that is a spiral. Now is the time to take a look at something pretty interesting. And you can tell me why, hopefully, in the comment section down below, why this is happening. I have some ideas, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So here's the Cartesian version. Remember, I told you I was going to go with the simpler case arctangent y over x and if you think about this this is my theta and this is my r squared so in other words this is r squared equals theta squared which was implied by r equals theta but wait a minute this implies two things r can be theta or r can be negative theta this is probably why we have these two pictures maybe or this one and that one are kind of like symmetrical with respect to the y-axis right but wait a minute why aren't we getting a spiral right that's a good question. So something to think about. Again, like I said earlier, I have some ideas, but I'd like to hear your thoughts first. I don't want to give it away, okay? And the animation that I'd like to show you, and I'm also going to share the link in the description and also down below. If, you for, if I forget, please remind me. So let's go ahead and take a look at a really cool animation. We'll finish with that. All right, ready? So here's the animation I'm talking about. Again, I'm going to share the link with you. But this is basically called the Archimedean or arithmetic spiral. And the general equation is actually r equals a theta plus b. In our case, a is 1, b is 0, so you get the special case. And a and b control different things, obviously. And if you change them, you're going to get different shapes. Or are you going to get different shapes or are you going to get the same shape but they scale differently, right? But let's go ahead and play with this a little bit because this is fun. <laughs> okay, if I didn't mess it up, hopefully. So basically, we can go ahead and go to this website and then press draw and it's going to start drawing the spiral for us. How cool is that, right? And definitely, it's just going to go through all the iterations and you're going to get your spiral. And I believe on this page, there's different things you can look at such as the logarithmic spiral and so on and so forth. And you can also get some information on polar coordinates. I don't even know why it stopped. Anyways, and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.